Does a portal or gateway to another world exist along the Gadianton Canyon in Utah? According to local legends of the area, it just might. There are many spoken tales of cars and even delivery trucks entering the canyon and simply never being seen again. Some people tell of how the gates to hell existed along the canyon road, while others insist that those who disappeared have been swallowed by the rocky earth itself, led astray by condemned spirits that roam the canyon. One of the strangest accounts associated with the canyon occurred in May 1972, when four Southern Utah University college students, Jana North, who was driving, Carol Abbott, Lisa Rochefort, and Bethany Gordon, were returning back to their dormitories after attending a rodeo. It was a dark night with no moon, and it was already very late. So late, in fact, that they feared their housemaster would lock the doors. With this in mind, the girls decided to take a shortcut through the Gadianton Canyon. To begin with, the canyon road was normal, and the girls chatted away as they drove. However, the road would come to a sudden end, and in front of them was nothing but a huge wall of rock. After Jana brought the car to a stop, she quickly surveyed her surroundings. They had no option but to turn the car around and head back the way they had come. They eventually neared the end of the canyon and were back out on the main road. However, much to their shock, the scenery was much different than before. When they had entered the canyon, all along the roadside was nothing but sagebrush and sand. Now, however, great vast fields of grain were on one side and ponderosa pine trees stood on the other. What's more, a bright full moon now shone in the night sky. The girls were more than perplexed. While it was possible they could have taken a wrong turn, how would that explain the sudden appearance of a full moon? They continued on along the road, feeling a slight sense of relief when street lamps began appearing along the roadside, suggesting they were heading back into town. They eventually spotted a neon sign ahead. The closer they got, they could see the building that the sign was attached to, which they presumed was a diner, as well as the parking lot in front. As they were pulling their vehicle onto the premises, they noticed the neon lettering was not only in a strange language, but used equally strange letters that appeared to them as nothing but bizarre squiggles. Jana was bringing the car to a stop when the girls noticed several men had walked out of the nearby building. As she was nearest to them, Lisa began winding down her window in order to ask the men for directions. Before she could though, she let out a terrified scream and urged Jana to get them out of there straight away. Although she didn't know why, she pressed down on the accelerator and got the car in motion once again. By this point, Carol had also seen the strange men and urged Jana to hurry, telling her that these men were not human. Jana quickly exited the parking lot and proceeded back down the road they had just arrived on. As she looked into her rearview mirror, however, she could see that the men were getting onto strange egg-shaped vehicles that appeared to have three wheels, two at the front and one at the back. A moment later, she could hear a strong whirring sound as these vehicles went into motion, a sound she would liken to that of an angry nest of hornets. These futuristic transporters had an extremely bright light on the front of them and it was clear to Jana that they were following them. She pressed down harder on the accelerator, but the egg-shaped crafts continued to gain ground on them. Then, up ahead, she could see the opening of the canyon. At this point, taking her speed up to 80 miles per hour, she headed straight for it. Upon entering the canyon, the wheels of their car appeared to kick up a large clod of dust blocking their view of the menacing, pursuing men. As they continued on into the canyon, Jana kept her foot pressed down on the gas, not daring to slow down. Then, in what appeared like a flash, their surroundings appeared as they had when they had first entered the canyon. The fields and trees were gone, as was the full moon, and all around them was just desert, as it had been previously. Perhaps because of the instantly changing environment, Jana lost control of the car, it left the road and eventually came to a stop in the sagebrush. The four girls remained still for several moments and gathered their thoughts. When they did speak, they all agreed that whoever the strange men were, they were not human. 
with Lisa in a more fragile state than the rest of them, they agreed they should remain in the locked car until daylight. With the arrival of morning, Jana finally got out to inspect the vehicle. And to her dismay, she found that three of the tires were flat and one of the hubcaps was missing. There were also several large dents in the bodywork. They locked the crippled vehicle and began to make their way to the main road. They would eventually flag down a passing police patrol car driven by Trooper Vic Lundquist. They would tell him of the bizarre ordeal and he would ultimately investigate the matter. His investigation would turn up some quite thought-provoking details. One of the most intriguing was the fact that the tire marks began only 200 yards from where the car had come to a stop, with no markings coming from the main road. It was as if it had suddenly appeared right in the middle of the desert. And this distance from the road was around two miles with no sign whatsoever of its journey from the road to where the tire marks began. There was also no sign whatsoever in the immediate vicinity of that missing hubcap, meaning whatever had caused the damage to it, it likely happened before the girl's vehicle appeared in the desert. Lundquist would conclude that although he couldn't explain what had happened to the four college students or their vehicle, something out of the norm had certainly taken place. Ultimately, the incident remains unexplained and is an encounter that has, like many others in the area, taken on urban legend-like status ever since. We should note, though, that many legends, be they contemporary or ancient, often have partial truths to them. Could this be the case here? Many of the legends around Gadianton Canyon strongly suggest that there is some kind of anomaly along this mysterious roadway. One that is an apparent temporary gateway to a location unknown, perhaps to many different destinations. What might cause this anomaly is as mysterious as the accounts themselves. However, the notions that portals and gateways to other worlds might exist is not quite as far-fetched as some people might think, with even many mainstream scientists contemplating the reality of such interdimensional doorways, if only in theory. If though, Science one day does discover that portals to other realms of existence are indeed a part of our reality. However, such discoveries or breakthroughs are made. Then accounts and claims such as those of Janna and her friends would have to be re-examined and re-evaluated. Accounts that have been largely brushed aside in the past might suddenly find themselves being used as case studies at the center of scientific breakthroughs. Just where had the four college students traveled to when they emerged from the canyon that evening in the spring of 1972? Had they been transplanted to another dimension, perhaps even another time somewhere in the future? Or if we recall the girl's certainty that the four men were in fact not human, had they somehow emerged on another planet? And wherever they did travel to, might it be that the car's missing hubcap remains there, perhaps still today? A piece of evidence of four strange visitors who arrived in a box-like vehicle and then disappeared into thin air. What we should maybe contemplate more than anything else though is that if we accept the four college students' story as being true, that they did unwittingly travel to another world, wherever that world might be, then what is to stop those who exist there, the strange men who were not human, from traveling to our reality? perhaps with much more aggressive plans in mind than Janna and her friends. Indeed, if the existence of portals is ever proven to be real, then it is something we should contemplate with a sense of urgency.